Good morning, campers. Since you are already assembled, just while I'm throwing the background up, uh, do you want to have a go at this, please? Where are these electrons about to go? We've got a comb with some electrons on and a hand coming towards them. Um, <clears throat> we've got a very dodgy comp to get a photo of a car. <coughs> Excuse me. Which has got some sort of electrons around the petrol tank. Um, and then someone going to fill up the car with petrol with a nozzle. And we've got a storm cloud with some electrons in it hovering above the ground. Where are all those electrons about to go, please? Scoochie bag this way. I think I've got a Justin Timberlake song in my head. That's a bit old school, isn't it? Is he still around? I think it's him, that... I see she's sitting do when you dance, 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 girl. All those things that she doesn't do. That's Justin Timberlake, isn't it? I got this feeling down in my bones. Girls are natural, but you know what I mean. And it's, sorry, it's supposed to be concentrating. It's not too hard, is it, this, hopefully? Mm. <laughs> Get all my electric bits out ready to show you. Um, what's first? That one. And then this one. All those things that she can do with the cheat dance, dance, let's go. And that goes in there. Yes, wonderful. And that, oh yes, that goes in there. Oh, lovely. Oh, thank you for coming and thank you for liking this. <laughs> and thank you for watching our catch-up, for watching our catch-up. All right, should we go through the answers? Just a quick warm-up, really, um, for when we did static electricity. Mm. <laughs> Just drinking cereal behind you, Shai. Um, electrons, they've all got a negative charge. So they repel each other, don't they? They don't like to be together. If you put your hand near... Electrons that have been trapped on a comb, the electrons will go into your hand, right? You might get a teeny tiny little electric shock. Um, we looked at one of the lessons on static electricity, how this is quite dangerous. There were certain cars that had to be recalled because electrons were building up quite near their petrol tank. And what are electrons flowing through the air? They're a spark, aren't they? And there's a lot of gas uh, particles like petrol hanging in the air in a petrol station. It's very dangerous, so they would move on to you. And this is what um, lightning is, right? Just electrons that build up in clouds. And then when they're repelling each other so much, they just can't take it any, any, each other anymore. They find a way bound to... Uh, wow, I just shouldn't talk with cereal in my mouth. I'm going to chew. 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 <laughs> and now flip. Give it the old chew and flip, Lara. Come on, pull yourself together. <laughs> Hello, Science Alliance. Hello. It's our penultimate lesson on electricity. That means it's our nearly last lesson. That next week is the last lesson where we're kind of doing recap, actually. So this lesson is quite nice. It's, it's standalone. It doesn't really look at what we've looked at before. And it's all about electricity that comes into your home and how to stay safe as well. We've got a little quiz at the end. Yeah, I'm quite excited about this one. All right, so the first big shocker, you might know this, you might not. Have you heard of the band um, ACDC? It's good to be back, yeah, the band, a very good band. Um, they get their name from different kinds of electricity. And the electricity that we have looked at so far is direct current. That's the DC bit, direct current. Only flows in one direction. Just the electrons moving. Obviously they can split, like we've seen, parallel circuits. They can branch off, but the electrons are always driving in the same direction. That's the, you might have just assumed that that always happened because that's the only one we've talked about. If I've ever mentioned current, it has been direct current, like the one produced by, say, a battery. But today, we're looking at something called alternating current, which sort of does what it says on the tin. Can you picture alternating current? She says fudging for time while she writes it on the board. So we will talk later about these two massive figures in science, uh, Thomas Edison and Nikolai Tesla. So Thomas Edison, um, 
was sort of famously quite an unpleasant person, but a brilliant inventor and scientist. He thought back in the day when electricity was just starting to come into people's homes, that everyone's homes should use direct current, traveling in one direction, like how they do from batteries. Uh, Nikolai Tesla, nicer guy, he thought it should be alternating current, and he won. I will tell you the whole story later, it's a very good story, but basically, alternating current is what comes out of your plug sockets in your house um, to do a very uncomfortable recap of a model we've looked at. Do you remember ages ago we did a model where I said to bring a piece of string and you had to like hook the string around your knee or your leg or something and we said that this was a good model for electricity because uh, you push or pull the string and the string moves around your knee. And we said that the push was like the voltage because voltage pushes the current around the circuit. And we said that the current was like how much string passes a point per second because current is like how much charge per second. Uh, and we said the resistance was, was how hard it was to, to pull it. Um, so if that's direct, that's a good model for direct current. You just pulling in one direction and the string going round. Alternating current, I can't, I can't keep this up for more than 10 seconds. Alternating current would be if you like push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. <laughs> um, that's what it's doing. The current is just constantly changing direction. And how that happens is, um, the voltage are, are like sort of one side of the circuit is is constantly changing direction. Okay, let's let's quickly because we're doing waves next term, so you're going to learn all about waves. But let's quickly look at how these alternating direct currents look on a on a graph. Here we are. I've said graph. If you've printed this off on my Facebook page, you have got this. If not, you might want to do a sketch. You might not bother. It's on BBC Bite Size. But here we've got some squares. We've got voltage going along uh, the top uh, on the x y axis. <laughs> it's going from minus three volts, minus two, minus one, and then zero, one, two, three. Uh, and as time goes by, this is uh, what what voltage does, how it changes. If you were going to draw a wave inverted commas. It just stayed at 2.5 volts all the time on that graph. What would it look like? It is not a trick question. I'm going to give you five seconds. Five. Mm. Mm. Two. Coffee. One. It just looks like that, doesn't it? It just looks like a straight line. Voltage is at 2.5 volts. So that's what we've been doing so far. Yeah, we haven't even bothered with this graph because it's boring. If you plug in a cell to a circuit and the cell is providing 2.5 volts, then that would be the voltage over time. Um, an alternating current on this graph looks like a proper nice wave, like that. This is a little bit dodgy because I've had to draw it myself. Um, but yeah, in the UK, it, our electricity alternates 50 times per second. So if, if this was one second, that wave would be going up, down, up, down, up, down, 50 times. And it's about 230 volts. Well, I haven't showed it on here, but this wave would go all the way up to plus 230 and this would all go all the way down to minus 230. Um, someone was asking me last week, I think it was, we were looking at hair dryers. We were looking at the power rating on various things. This is a heat gun from my garage. Uh, so last week, you remember, we looked at power and we looked at how like 1,400 watts means that this heat gun uses 1,400 joules of energy every second. That's its power rating. But some people noticed there was an, a little capital H and a little Z. Uh, that said 50 hertz. That's what that is talking about. You can see it also says 240 volts. I mean, it's a bit rough. What's coming out of your plug socket, generally speaking, and certainly if you're answering your exam question, is 230. But that's what that means. That's, that's how that works on an alternating current of 230 or 40 volts at 50 times per second. Okay, uh, so hertz means per second. But yeah, we will do all about that when we do waves just after Easter. Right, so... Here is a, <laughs> a diagram, if you will, of what this actually means for your house, like how electricity comes into your home. So, hello. Um, yeah, you plug your plug in at the plug socket, right? And your plug, I don't, don't want to spoil anything. I'm leaking out information quite slowly in this lesson, so I don't want to really show you the plug yet. But when you plug, <laughs> plug into your plug socket, um, then on the back, if you ever open a plug, which you totally should if you've got adults with you that say it's okay, you'll see that they've got different wires attached, right? You can see there, there's a 
brown wire and there's a blue wire. So the brown wire is the dangerous one. Brown equals live wire. It's called the live wire and that's what brings this massive 230 volts, which is alternating, into your home. 230 volts is incredibly dangerous, okay? We've only been looking at cells of like 1.5 volts. So this is why the rest of this lesson is about how we stay safe with this huge voltage coming into our house. And then this forms, I've done a very simple diagram, but this kind of goes into an appliance, say a washing machine. The energy uh, is used by the washing machine, shifted by the washing machine, and then a neutral blue wire comes back out again and into the plug. So the neutral blue wire is at zero volts. So, well, I've done this, I've done this whole thing in a PowerPoint. I'm doing it again where I just talk at you and I've done a perfectly good diagram to try and explain what's happening. So here we've got the neutral wire, right? and the live wire coming from the plug socket into the plug, through the cable and into your washing machine, where this is very simplified, but it forms a circuit. The brown live wire supplies an alternating potential difference. And the blue neutral wire is at zero volts. Now that, that seems very confusing, right? You're like, well, how do you have, it's a, a loop, a circuit. So how do you have a massive alternating potential difference through the brown wire and the blue wire stays at zero? Well, the answer is the difference in energy there is the energy that the appliance is using, okay? Um, what if something goes wrong? Let's get to the good bit now. So you've also got an earth wire in your plug, which is this uh, yellow and green stripy wire. And what happens is that earth wire goes through the cable as well, and it's connected to the metal casing of whatever your thing is, like maybe a washing machine. So if the live wire gets loose and touches the casing, <clears throat> if something goes wrong, <gasps> and suddenly you've got your live wire touching, for example, a metal casing of a washing machine, so at an enormous voltage now, like a current flowing through the washing machine. Luckily, because of this earth wire being attached, um, the electrons obviously like charge builds up on the washing machine but if you touch the casing those electrons would rather flow through the earth than flow through you okay right I'm going to pop you back up now and just talk to you in real life because I feel like it could be getting a bit confusing this so we've talked about how electrons and protons say positive and negative things that like, attract each other um, the Earth is not positive, but the Earth is massive, so it just has a very, very low resistance. It can handle a lot of electrons very happily, so uh, this is why lightning flows down to Earth. Things generally want to, not want, because they don't have brains, but you know what I mean. Things flow into Earth because Earth has a very, very low resistance, um, which is lucky for us. So yes, it's in this plug. I don't know, I fished this out of a skip, I think, years ago, because I thought it might be useful. And there you go. Um, so you can see, I don't even, I can't remember what piece of equipment this was, but I've got a plug here, which leads down to a cable, and then you can see the wires come out. So I've got my live neutral wire, so live neutral. I've got my live brown wire here, going into a bit of this. And there's also the blue neutral wire, which are both attached and forming a circuit with the piece of equipment. But also, we've got this yellow and green stripy wire, which I don't know if you can make that out. It's not actually really seemingly doing anything. It's just attached to the casing. I'll show you. And that is just so if a little bit of live wire kind of gets out and touches the casing. When you touch the casing, the electrons would rather flow through the earth wire then flow through you. Let's have a look in close up. I find it all kind of gorgeous, this stuff. All going on in secret inside all our equipment. There we go, look, so you can see the neutral wire and the live wire are kind of doing complicating things to do with circuits. But the earth wire is just, uh, it's just touching this, this bit of case here. There you go. So if, if that was somehow charged, the electrons would flow through there and not flow through you. And that would be earthed, right, right attached to the ground. Okay, right, Whew. come back a bit. Um, so, oh yeah, the quick question, because it's fun this, why do you think the earth wire is stripy? Why is the earth wire stripy? The live wire with the very dangerous huge amount of uh, voltage is brown. I, 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 you could remember, like, uh, it's really dangerous, so if you go near it, you might poo yourself. I don't know. Live wire is brown. Blue wire is neutral. Why is the FY stripy? Stripy green and yellow. Why?
Some people on Facebook yesterday were like, oh, so you can sort of see it better. I'm like, yeah, but why not just make it yellow or just green? If you have people in your house with a certain condition, then you might have got this straight away. Like uh, my dad and my husband have both got a certain condition, which means I'd be like, oh yeah, I know why they did it. It's uh, for colorblind people. It's because um, a lot of colorblind people really struggle with the difference between green and brown and see them as pretty much the same color. And obviously if you are wiring a plug, you do not want to get a brown live wire mixed up with the nice safe green earth wire. So that's why it's striking, yeah, clever. Okay, but what if there's a surge of electricity, right? We need more safety measures going on. Because what if like lightning strikes, that can cause a huge surge. So like more current than usual to come out of the plug socket or, if all the electricity goes off in your home and then it comes back on again, that can cause like a surge of current, um, which is quite dangerous for you, but also really bad for the appliance, right? Um, so if this heat gun usually operates at, I don't know, like five amps and suddenly 20 amps surges through it, uh, it could really damage all the, all the parts in the heat gun. We don't want that to happen. So we came up with this genius idea. You've got fuses in your plugs as well. -da! There we go. Um, a fuse is basically just a very, very thin piece of wire that it melts if too much current flows. Oh, that's simple this. Look how beautiful they are. This is an actual fuse. You can see it's just a really thin bit of wire in the middle. This is your circuit diagram for a fuse. I've put, be careful. So a resistor we've looked at loads of times before. It's just a boring rectangle with a line on either side. A fuse is the same, but the line goes all the way through. It's like they're deliberately trying to confuse us, isn't it? Um, so different fuses melt when different current passes through them. So I've put, obviously, if a machine needs 10 amps to work, it wouldn't be any good if your fuse melted when three amps passed through it. You need to choose the right fuse. Okay, let's go back. Um, so the fuse is connected to the live wire, right? It'd be no good attached to the neutral wire because if you've got a surge of current, the current could still come through and damage the things. It's got to be attached to the live wire so that if it melts, uh, the whole thing shuts off, okay? Um, so yeah, it's, the fuse is attached to the live wire. Oh yeah, so it's, it's basically you've just got this very thin piece of wire in between, um, like in the circuit so that it melts. But yes, like I say, if this operates at 10 amps, then... It's no good having a three amp fuse in there that melts when three amps passes through it because every time you turned it on, the fuse would melt and the thing would never work. So it's important in real life and for your IGCSE to know which fuse to choose. So if this operated at, say, 10 amps, you need a fuse that is slightly higher than that, yeah? You wouldn't want like 10.1 because, you know, current isn't perfect and it might still break. But well, what they have chosen, in fact, when I... Uh, opened the back of this plug, I found that they've got a 13 amp fuse in it. I'll show you. Here we go. Or whatever this, whatever this thing is when I opened this plug up. They've wrapped it all in plastic, which I guess is a good idea. Like you can see I had a go at a bread with, with a bread knife. Don't try this at home, but I couldn't get it open. But they did make it very, very easy to replace the fuse. So that's where my little 13 amp fuse was living and I've priced it out to show you. Um, but that's because obviously it's quite it's fairly frequent that the fuse will blow in a thing and you need to be able to change it. You don't want to buy a whole new piece of equipment. So that's good design. Um, right, do some questions for me, please. Can you choose the correct fuse? Sorry, that's me. Right, I'm going through the dear bird. Always choose a fuse that melts at a slightly higher current than the machine works at. So here we go. Right, we did power last week, so hopefully this isn't a complete shocking surprise for you. Um, I've got four scenarios here, and I'd like you to say which fuse would you choose? You can choose a one amp fuse that melts at one when one amp passes through it. Three amp fuse melts when three amps passes through it. 5 amp or 13 amps, and I've given you the equation that you might have seen before last week. Power equals current times voltage. So number one, okay, you've got an 800 watt toaster with a potential difference of 230 volts. So you've got to work out what current is flowing through that toaster, just when it's normally working, and then think, well, what fuse are you going to put in that plug to protect the toaster? Number two, a 2.3 kilowatt kettle with a potential difference of 230 volts. So what's the current that normally flows through a 2.3 kilowatt, be careful, <coughs> kettle? 
uh, with a potential difference of 230. And so which fuse would you use to protect it? A one kilowatt hairdryer, plug it into the mains in the UK. What fuse are you gonna choose? And number four, you've just got a parallel circuit, like a circuit where the current splits three times with three bulbs on each, well, three bulbs on the branches and ammeters showing that there's 0.7 amps flowing through each branch. So you've got three branches with 0.7 amps flowing through each branch. What fuse are you gonna choose? Choose which fuse to use. Hmm. I could write a song about that and become an internet sensation. Choose which fuse to use. Do, 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 do. Fuse, 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 fuse. Is this, is this helping you to concentrate? Yeah. Right, I'll go through the first one in case you're sitting there thinking, what? I have no idea. If you've got an 800 watt toaster with a potential difference of 230, well, you've, you've got the power rating, 800 watts, right, is the power. Uh, you need to find the current. So current is power divided by voltage. You should be able to rearrange that equation. So you do 800 watts divided by 230 volts, which is 0.3, sorry, 3.5 amps. So if, if this toaster works, normally with a current of three point amps running through it. You don't want to put a three amp fuse in because every time you plug the toaster in, the fuse will melt and the toaster won't work. So you've got to choose the one above. So it's the five amp fuse. Number two, 2.3 kilowatts. Be very careful, yeah? You can't just put 2.3 into the equation. A kilowatt is a thousand watts. So 2.3 kilowatts is 2,300 kilowatts. So it's Current equals power divided by voltage again, um, <clears throat> which equals 2,300 watts divided by 230 volts, which is 10 amps. So you wouldn't put, even if you had a choice, you wouldn't put a 10 amp fuse in there, yeah? Because it would just instantly melt. You gotta go 13 amp fuse for that one. Uh, and then number three is 1,000 watts divided by, obviously the mains in the UK runs on 230 volts again. So you get an answer of 4.3 amps. So you would choose a five amp fuse. I give you five seconds for the last one. So did you remember that in a parallel circuit, all the currents on all the branches add up to the current coming out of the branches? So the current flowing through this fuse here is 0.7 amps plus 0.7 amps plus 0.7 amps, which is 2.1 amps. So you would choose the three amp fuse. Um, and oh, sorry, that was a bit fast, wasn't it? Stab, stab, stab. Uh, and it's gone again. <laughs> and this, I'm sorry, this is such a kind of crowbarred, like trying to teach to an exam bit. Um, circuit breakers work in a similar way to fuses, but they're positioned where the electricity comes in. You need to know this. So, you know, like that bit in Jurassic Park where they have to go and like sort of uh, pump switches and things. It might not be that a fuse breaks. It might be that uh, in your house you have got loads of circuit breakers like this and they just flip. They're really clever, actually. I shouldn't be like, oh, you need to know this for exam because this is good. An RCCB, residual current circuit breaker, is the particular one that you need to know if you're doing IGCSE physics, and it detects a difference in the current between the live and the neutral wire and switches off the circuit, which is actually brilliant, really. So, obviously, because it's what I showed you, that really simple model, was like a series circuit, wasn't it? You've got the very dangerous live wire joined up to the zero voltage neutral wire um so the current in all those wires like all the way around you would expect it to be the same yes yeah? so we've done that loads of times before a series circuit a loop um so the rccb thing <laughs> circuit breaker um it detects if there's a difference between the current in the live wire and the current in the neutral wire so if the current in the neutral wire is like less than the current in the live wire you know that some current is leaking somewhere which is very bad and dangerous and it just switches the whole thing off which is brilliant a really worthwhile thing for you to remember later on when you're about to go into your GCSE exam okay that is your whole plug i've put here except 
Uh, this is everything you need to know about a plug. You might get a cable tie across here, keeping the cables in place. Um, but this symbol means that an appliance is double insulated. You might have noticed, if you were really eagle-eyed, that on my heat gun, uh, when I showed you the plug on my heat gun, there's no earth wire. That is not a mistake. This heat gun doesn't need an earth wire. It definitely needs a fuse to protect it from... Uh, surges of current. Obviously it needs a, this is the cable tie by the way I was telling you about that it keeps the cables in place, but it doesn't need an earth wire because it's got this little picture on it, a square and a square, and that means it's double insulated. Uh, and double insulation, it just means that there's a layer of insulation around the whole appliance, so it doesn't need an earth wire. I mean this does make sense actually. Like, obviously better than having an electric case uh, washing machine where the current that might be flowing through it goes into the ground. It's just to have a plastic case washing machine, right? Use an insulator so that even if you touch it and there is a live wire that's gone wrong somewhere inside, electrons can't flow through plastic. We know this. This is why plugs are made are covered in plastic and why cables are made of rubber so that when you touch them, electricity doesn't conduct itself into your hand. Um, so yeah, if you see this little square in a square symbol, then it means that it's double insulated. There's like plastic or whatever insulation all around it. Uh, so it doesn't need an earth wire because you're not going to get electrocuted anyway. Okay, it's time to play Safe or Shock. I'm going to show you some examples um, and I want you to tell me if this is a safe situation or if it's a shock situation. So yeah, look out for the little double insulation symbol. I hope you've remembered how what plugs look like. Here we go. Is this a safe situation or a shock situation? You've got a neutral wire going off to the left, you've got an earth wire going up the top, you've got a live wire on the right attached to a fuse and it's uh, all linking up to some Christmas lights. Safe situation or shock situation? Ten, nine. This is a, it's a safe situation. You're fine. You've got, um, this is not double insulated. In fact, when I looked up what appliances are not double insulated, pretty much the only thing that isn't double insulated now uh, is really old fashioned Christmas lights. They're the only thing you might have in your house that isn't. How we survived the 90s, I do not know. So old fashioned Christmas lights have to have an earth wire because if something goes wrong and you touch them, that current needs to flow somewhere other than you. Uh, but yeah, this is fine because it's got a fuse to protect it and it's got an earth wire, so all good. What about this situation? Is this shock or safe? You've got a neutral wire going off to the right, you've got no earth wire, you've got a live wire attached to a fuse and it's leading to quite an old looking washing machine. Is that safe or shock? Ten, nine. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. That is a shock situation because there's no earth wire, but this thing is not double insulated. I've indicated nowhere that it is double insulated. So if a live wire, did end up touching the casing of this washing machine, uh, you could get current flowing through you because that's its only option, right? So that is a dangerous situation. What about this one? You've got a neutral wire going off to the left, you've got no earth wire, you've got a live wire attached to a fuse and you've got a vacuum cleaner which has got a little square and a square on it. Five, four, three, two, one, it's... It's safe, yeah, because there's no earth wire, but when you touch that, if it happened to be have a live wire touching it, you wouldn't get a shock because you'd be touching plastic, with it, which is an insulator. Next one. What about this plug here? Is that shock or safe? Oh, that's a trick question. Shock or safe? Oh, trick question. And if it is a trick question, what is it a trick question? That's a better question, isn't it? Is that a trick question? And if so, why is this a trick question? You've got a neutral wire going off to the right, you've got an earth wire going upwards, and you've got a live wire going off to the left, to the right. Wait, oh my god, I'm so bad at lefts and rights. The neutral wire's on the left, the live wire's on the right, it's got an earth wire, but it's got no fuse. The answer is, uh, it's like a shock situation, it's not a safe situation, because there's no fuse, but in actual fact this plug just would not work, would it? Because you've, you've broken the circuit, the current has to flow through the live wire and through the fuse to get to the appliance, so if there's no fuse, this thing just isn't going to work. Well done if you got that, oh, that's quite hard. Next situation, you've got a live wire going off the left, you've got an earth wire going off the top, you've got a neutral wire going off to the right, attached to a fuse, and you've got a kettle which has got a little square and a square in it. Tim. 
Nein. Kaffee. I don't think many of you will have got this one. On Facebook, everyone was shouting, safe, it's safe, yeah, safe. And then a couple of people spotted, it is not safe. This is actually the most dangerous one I've showed you. This is a big shock situation. Why is that not safe? Can you see it? It would not, it's probably not that uncommon for this to happen. Why is that a really, really, really dangerous plug? Can you see it? It's because the live wire and the neutral wire have been switched over. This plug has been incorrectly wired, okay? Which, you know, totally happens. If you're the kind of person that's like, no, I'm not going to call anyone in. I can do this, <coughs> my dad. Then you might accidentally wire the neutral wire and the live wire the wrong way around. This is actually a massive deal because... Uh, oh, good, I get to draw another diagram on the board. Because, do you know what? I should stop putting those pins back, shouldn't I? Um, here's your plug socket, right? In your house, uh, in, if you're in the UK, you've got a three pin plug. You've got a switch, right, on your plug socket. That switch is <coughs> controlling the live wire. So, um, the you've, we've sort of talked briefly about how a plug has got pins. Um, and it's the pins that the wires are connected to, right? So when you plug it in, one of these holes um, is connecting at the live wire, and one's connected to the neutral wire. So if you accidentally switch your wires around, then when you think you've turned off the electricity supply to your appliance, you haven't. You've turned off the you've turned off the neutral wire, but that doesn't make a difference, does it? It's the live wire that's bringing that incredibly dangerous current into your home you've got that incredibly dangerous voltage so if you had like a kettle but the wires were the wrong way around you might think that you've turned off the kettle and you might i mean don't without unplugging it but you could think all right just like unscrew the kettle and fix it and it's fine because it's turned off but you that live wire would not have been turned off because it's in the neutral place you see what i mean so you've still got this potentially incredibly dangerous enormous voltage which is live and um, someone on a electric forum as well was saying that like that's bad because if you don't turn off your tv at night then you've got this huge live voltage like constantly coming to, to i didn't i wasn't understanding what they were saying but anyway it's bad super bad <laughs> so don't don't do it and the last one <clears throat> it's not the last one actually uh we've got christmas tree lights again and we've got a neutral wire going off to the left we've got a earth wire pointing up the top we've got a live wire on the right attached to a fuse and some christmas lights I don't think probably my diagram is good enough for me to for you to see what I was trying to get at. So I'll just give you three seconds and I'll tell you. Three, two, one. What I was trying to show um, was that this earth wire up here is looking a little bit frayed. Yeah, we've just got some very thin wires attached to uh, this screw here. It's it's kind of not attached properly. That is that's kind of a shock situation. What we're in danger of here is overheating. You remember, if a wire is very, very thin, it's very difficult for the current to get through. It's very hard for the electrons to flow because they keep colliding with the, the atoms, the ions inside the wire. Um, and if it's hard for current to get through, what happens? It's very high resistance. So stuff gets very hot. And uh, heat around electrical appliances is very bad because it can cause fires. You might have seen, um, you know, like plug adapters where it's kind of like a, a row of uh, plugs that you can plug in so that you can plug in more stuff you probably know that you shouldn't fill um, like plug boards full of plugs and that's the reason because um, a lot of current being drawn produces a lot of heat which is very dangerous and it could cause fires right next one shock or safe you've got a neutral wire going off to the right you've got an earth wire pointing upwards and you've got a live wire going off to the right sorry attached to a fuse is that shock or safe be careful here. Five, four, three, two, one. Have you spied it? <coughs> no, I'm kidding. Sorry, that's just a totally normal plug. That is perfectly safe. Earth wire and fuse and all the wires are in their correct places. Well done if you saw through my evil trick. And lastly, <laughs> um, you've got a neutral wire and earth wire and a live wire in the right places, but instead of a fuse, you've got a screw. Is that shock or safe? And more interesting question, why? <laughs> why is this 
why is this obviously a shock situation? Why is that really bad? And by the way, if you're thinking, oh, Lara, don't be so ridiculous. This here is a real photo from the internet of something that somebody found in a house. Look at that. Instead of a fuse, <laughs> got an open plug and then just a drill bit stuck into where the fuse should be. So why is that <laughs> really dangerous? It's obviously not funny. <laughs> Don't do it at home. Um, well, the one where the fuse was missing, right? That was annoying. Like The thing wouldn't work, but it wasn't incredibly dangerous because the thing wouldn't work. Whereas this, the appliance would work, wouldn't it? Because current is going to very happily flow through the live wire and through a drill bit. In fact, the drill bit's very thick, it's got very low resistance. Um, but yeah, it's never going to melt. So if you have a surge of current for whatever reason, you're going to really damage your appliance. And also, obviously, you've got an open plug with a tremendous amount of voltage um, across that bit. So if you went near it, you would potentially be in a huge amount of danger. Um, and, and I guess that is why all this stuff is on your IGCSE syllabus, because it's helping us all to keep safe. Possibly one of the most useful lessons we've done so far. Okay, look, that is the end of this lesson on electrical safety in your homes. Um, I'll go over to my Facebook page in a minute and just see if any of you have left me any comments if you're watching live. Um, so yes, we've got one more lesson on electricity next week. And then I'm taking two weeks off for Easter because I've got the parent my children. And then when we start back, we're going to do waves, which I'm very excited about. I love the topic of waves. We're going to get magnifying glasses out and use candles to figure out how they work. We're going to look at sound waves and uh, like rainbows. And it's going to be super cool. So next week, we've got a bit of uh, there's some stuff that one exam board needs you to learn, but the other exam board didn't need, doesn't need you to learn. So next week we're going to do sort of a bit of mopping up. I'm also going to give you lots of trick questions and try and uh, challenge you and dig around and see if we can find out what you haven't understood about electricity so that we can fix that. Oh, a comment. Is this going to be Chloe? It's usually Chloe. Is it Chloe? Oh no, it's Tiger and Bears. Hello. Oh, thanks for watching you too. Yeah, very good to see you. Um, for the rest of you, if you are, I don't know why you would be at this lesson uh, if you hadn't heard me say this before, but you never know. Um, if you want to support me with money, not to pay me for my job, you totally can. It is very much appreciated. In fact, it's necessary for some of you to do it. And luckily you are. So this is my job. If you want to go to my about section on YouTube and press uh, the link to this website called Coffee, you can send me five pounds a month and I will send you nice stuff. Um, I always say I will never hold anything back from anyone that is going to help them pass their exams. But actually, these rainbow glasses that I send you, they link really nicely to the waves topic because they make you see rainbows. Um, and I'll send you a description of how they work, which again will link nicely to the waves topic. And I'll send you Theatre of Science magazine. It's a very good time to sign up if you're watching live or in the next like two days. It's a good time to sign up because when you sign up, you get a welcome pack, which has like the glasses and a past copy of Theatre of Science magazine. But... The new copy of Theatre Magazine has just come out and it's been sent out to people like right now. So, so it's basically two for one at the moment. If you sign up, I'll send you the welcome pack. And then like a few days later, a week later, you'll get the new magazine as well uh, for five pounds a month. I'm just trusting everyone to not like sign up and then cancel immediately. But if you want to, then, you, you know, you totally can. I, d I definitely don't have like the admin in place to stop that happening. <laughs> So knock yourselves out. Okay, you lot. Right, I'm going to go because in 20 minutes I'm on Facebook doing an ecology lesson on how animals and plants have adapted to their different environments. It's going to be fun. If you want to join me, I will see you there. Bring some ice cubes. Thanks for coming, everyone.